Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Brad, you are back. It is Friday Night Flies, and it has been one hell of a Christmas, might I add. Got a new house, had lots of family over, the in-laws, the outlaws, every kind of family possible. They were there. But, as you notice tonight, I don't have my hat on. The sign of respect for a fallen member of the family here, Mr. Tommy Cox, Ethan's grandfather. And, uh, you know, respect. When people get old, it happens. People die. But at the same time, you show them respect when they fall. And tonight, the show is about Tommy Cox. And we're going to have a moment of silence. Just, just in that thought, we're going to have a moment of silence. Okay, a moment of silence has passed. It's time to get back to celebrating. And tonight, the show is brought to you by Old Smoky Distillery. And these damn cherries are delicious. Absolutely delicious. And you know what? I think I'm going to have one. Scott, would you like to have a cherry? Uh, You've probably already had too many of these. I've had too many. I'm going to give you one, though. I'll come over and, and, and share it with you. Okay, there All it right. is. He's taking it right off the spoon. Good stuff. So tonight, we're tying. <laughs> stuff is trouble. Careful. Do not eat these things while you're at home by yourself. And get a designated driver. Moonshine. Anyhow, tonight we've got we've got uh, the BK Damselfly, and the reason this one came up above was that I was down ice fishing just a couple days ago, and I hooked the bottom, and I pulled up this leafy matter, and on that leafy matter sat this beautiful damselfly, about exactly the same size as what I'm going to tie tonight. The down downstairs here, I've got a bare hook because we're we're tying off the cuff, but I've tied a few of these, shared it with a few of my friends, whichever. But anyhow, on this leafy matter, there's this beautiful damselfly. And I'm like, man, I have got to duplicate this. Being that it's the middle of winter, fish you got to eat, they're eating these things. You guarantee they are. So I take this little damselfly and I'm like, you know what? It's minus 15. If I leave it out here on the ice, it's going to freeze. It's going to die. So I take that damselfly and I put it back in the ice hole and it starts swimming its way down. All of a sudden, I see it. Just a flash go by, kabam! I might as well have left that fly on the ice. But in this case, the trout had dinner, and it was pretty spectacular to see that go down. So tonight, I'm gonna to try my best to do the rendition of this damsel fly. And uh, once again, this show and this fly is dedicated to a dear friend of ours, Tom Cox. Tommy Cox, salute you, brother. RIP, rest in peace. Are we downtown here? Downtown, bud. Okay, so we're gonna start out here tonight with uh, I've got some eight aught, which I rarely ever tie in. Do we have any six aught by chance? Because I like to get a little aggressive with this. I got six aught. You got some? Is it threaded up, ready to go? What color? Just black. anything. Black would be fun. Look at that. It's already set up. That's a pretty fancy oh, bulb in here. On. What's going on, buddy? Everything okay? Oh, I got to uh, your flies. Get your camera all going. Got her figured? On my finger. So anyhow, we can't have you guys seeing blurry, blurry flies. So we're gonna focus on my hairy knuckle. So anyhow, we got. Uh, we're gonna start out with some six sock thread. I got a Daiichi. What is this? What are these hooks called? They're uh, Daiichi curved. Straight eye. Do you know what the number is on these guys? Um, I had them on the shelf here. Forever. I don't have that size, but it is the uh, what is it, size six or eight? style 1260. 1260. Same, uh, Man, if you um, if you guys haven't tried these, I hope I'm, I'm in the right area there. Bingo. I'm in the area. Bingo. These guys are awesome for doing your damsels. Stoneflies. Stoneflies, damsels, Daiichi, 
We love your hooks. We're big fans. Anyhow, we're going to start it out with a little bit of uh, olive pheasant tail. You want to take about an inch clump there and then get busy with your scissors. Knock that sucker back. You want to take the points, somewhat line them up. And you want about a half inch hanging off the back here. And you want them pointing somewhat flat. Something like that. You seeing them? Looking yeah. good. Tell you, I didn't know Tommy Cox that well. I just heard of about a million and a half stories of this this man from Ethan. And uh, I tell you, he's a he's a gentleman I would have loved to have met and got to spend some time with. I'll tell you that. But and do turn and uh, Nolan is uh, Ethan's father here he's with us tonight and uh, we've had a few good stories a few good laughs I'll tell you if you can leave this world with good stories and people smiling about you even after you're gone it tells you a little bit about a person Anyhow, so what we're going to do here now, we're going to throw in a little dubbing loop. Nothing too crazy, not too long. Oh, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to need a dubbing tool. Is uh, tonight I'm tying with everybody else's gear. Have you got something I can spin some dubbing with? Uh, I don't. <laughs> here, there's a dubbing hook right here behind. Right, right there, corner. No, no, down. the hook. Down. The super. Fly. No, no, I, I want the hook. Oh, hook one. Yeah. One of them's got to be a... No dubbing hooks? No Okay, well, I'll take whatever we got. I'll take whatever I can get. Whoa, is there anything a little bit... Super fly box. Yeah, a super fly box there. Anyhow, so, while we're waiting for materials, I'm holding this sucker open. Oh, there was... Uh, are there dubbing hooks in there? I probably could have uh, just spun some dubbing on this by about 10 times. Yeah, you probably, probably could have. Yeah. So just be patient, ladies and gentlemen. This fly is well worth the wait. Uh, maybe not. You're stuck with the big ass thing. No. Sorry, Brad. Nothing. Nothing. Some, have a cherry. Make it work. Have a cherry. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna need a cherry here too. Have a cherry, make it work. There, let's see what we got there. Yeah, yeah, little, uh, big one, big one, big one. Oh boy, this is saw the giants. Okay. <laughs> there's nothing else over here. Right? Nope. Okay, we're just gonna have to make it work. Okay, so instead of using the split finger mm, the star here, place? I'm gonna use one side of it. Just, we're going to see if we can make that work. Hopefully we can. So here on Friday Night Flies, we like to improvise some nights. And I'm sure you guys are checking in on this right now. But when you're tying live, the world does not stand still for you. What? The show must go on. And in this case, it's a damn good show. Okay, so we're trying to spread spread out your dubbing as evenly as possible with the tools you were given. And it's making it a little difficult to get at. Can you guys see what I'm doing here? Oh yeah. There's this good. is this is what you call improvising. Okay, so now that I got the helicopter here, we're gonna spin this sucker up. Be almost easier to use your whip finisher. <laughs> No, because it's got an open end. It's oh, not. It's not right. hooked. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I already thought of that one. Has anybody got a little chunk of Velcro? Yeah, I do. Okay, so we got that guy. Make it and what we're gonna do 
is I'm just going to throw a little whip finish on the end here, just a knot. This is awesome. You can tell I've had a few cherries. You can tell that I've had a few cherries, too many probably. And not using any of your own tools. And I'm not using any of my own tools. Good call, Scott. Good call. Okay, so we're going to swing this guy around. Cradle. Okay, now we're going to work it back up. Oh, she's working. It's working. It's like open heart surgery. Body. Look at that. That's tight. So now we're going to bring this guy back over. I like your bobbin. It's a little different than mine. Thank you. But it's very nice. I like a lot. I wish it was one of those auto ones like the Norvice. That is one thing I did like. The auto retracting? Yeah. I'll tell you, it's, it's definitely a little bit more of a challenge when you got a really big... I mean, who the... <laughs> that thing is f <laughs> Like, what the hell is this thing used for? Out of curiosity, like, who in their right mind would use that to spin their dubbing? It's like dubbing? a four-inch gap. <laughs> Am I the only one that thinks this is ridiculous? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay, so anyhow, you see what we got? We got a little bit of this. We got a little bit of that. No, there's got to be somebody at home. Hey, that's what I got. <laughs> that's my favorite tool. Okay, so... <laughs> Yeah, delete. We just lost yeah. somebody. Okay, so <laughs> now we've got this is pearl chain and black. I love this stuff. So cut a couple of them little eyeballs off. Actually, you know what? I'll probably. And you don't want to crowd the eyes or the head too much. So you bring her back just a little bit. Now, I mean, you could probably fish this thing the way it is. It would catch fish, I assure you. Because man, I'll tell you when you when you look at this thing, does that look buggy already or what, boys? It does look oh, buggy. That's buggy. Delish. That is buggy. Huh? Delish. So we're just doing figure eights across the ice, just to lock them in. The last thing you want to have happen is a a willing combatant come in, smack your fly, and knock its eyeballs off, and then laugh its way back. To wherever it came from so now we're going to mallard flank i love this stuff i tie it and everything i use it with our motor minnows when you find something that just looks really good you use it okay so this feather's a little bit on the long side is we got a little hackle plier anywhere anybody got a hackle plier going once going twice so, Anyone got some tools for me? Yeah, we just, uh, I was out ice fishing tonight. So, I was not prepared. But being that it's Tommy Cox night, I was not going to say no. And I did have a, a dynamite pattern to share with y'all. So. You just had to bring it out. We just had to bring it up, it. and this is uh, what the second time try at it. Oh yeah, I guess the people that were watching the first first try at it, what happened is uh, you probably heard my telephone ringing, my cell phone ringing in the background, and then the computer falling off. And then the computer falling off, falling off the desk, and that was it, blackout. Uh, and we are all okay here. It's just uh, <laughs> it just earthquake happened. It just happens that way sometimes. A couple so. Cherries. A couple cherries too many. So at that point, don't worry. I see there's hair feathers are going every which way. But yeah, that's the style, man. that's the beauty of Mallard Flank. Is that you just want to kind of slap it over, anchor it, and then from there pull it all back. So we got that guy. I always leave a little bit of a nub sticking down on the Mallard Flank. So you got something locked down on. You see how. Take these yeah, beautiful the, the fingers of mine, and you just pull back past there, and try your best to grab as much of that mallard flank as you can, peeling it back. Now, anchor it down. You see how quick that just kind of brought the feather fly together? Oh, buggy. And whatever's left up there, we'll clean it up afterwards. How's it looking on your side there? Absolutely awesome. Can't wait for the rollover. The rollover. 
point for Okay, it. so at this point, you got all that mallard flank laying down. We got a little chunk of Velcro here. And what we're going to do is just bug this out a little bit. That's all we're doing. Nice. Pull a little bit of that strands out from underneath. And you know what? After seeing that big rainbow run through my hole and try and eat this thing, I'm going to try my best to just do exactly what I did with the other one. Let it get cold. nice and cold. And then I'm going to drop it back in a hole and let it swim down. And I'm going to just see if another big like 18 or 20 inch rainbow comes by and slurps this sucker back. He won't forget it. So anyhow, I'm trying to just pull that one feather off. Okay, to finish this fly off, all you're going to do is take a little bit of this loose dubbing. You don't need to get too crazy on it. Spin her up on the head here, on the line. Got really quiet in here all of a sudden. Well, you're so serious. Dead serious. It's like a porno fly. Man, it's amazing. Okay, so that guy is looking mighty buggy. I'm going to put just a little bit more on there. I mean, you can make a head pretty bulky, but in this case, you don't really need to. No, you, you don't want to bury those eyes. No. So you keep it somewhat, but you you want to not cover up. You want to cover up your thread when you're going from transition to front to back. Okay, going in front. We're going to do one more lap, wrap, and then we're going around the front. Okay, so now, whip finish this sucker off. Oh, that thing is looking mighty buggy. I'm telling you guys that do still water, fly fishing, give this sucker a go. That's going to be awesome in the spring, too. Still water. Not to mention the, uh, the ice bowl that we're talking about. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to try tying some of these guys just, just in like with a lead body or something. Maybe put a little bit of wrap. Because I'll tell you, man, the... Uh, the fly, the, the holes, when you pull up a weed or whatever, man, it just seems like loaded. it is just loaded with these guys in a, in a major way. So all I'm doing there is just kind of cleaning up the head a little bit. We're going to pull a little bit of this back again, blend it all together. Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on the BK Damselfly. How's that thing look? Money, bud. But I assure you, bye. Dirty. This thing's gonna kill them. Literally. Unless you use a barbless hook and then you just catch and release. <laughs> Alright, give us uh, like a, from the top there for your thumbnail. Okay, thumbnail? Ooh, ooh. Right. Down a little bit, let's get a little side action. Oh, Bingo. Nice. Right there? Pause it there. That's your thumbnail, bud. Awesome. Looking good. Okay, let's go back up top. So there you go. We're back up top. We got the lovely music playing in the background. Thousands of people in the attendance. I got my hat off. Everybody because, in the stands are being really quiet. Yes, it's amazing. It's amazing. Well behaved. It's, it's a good show tonight. And, and once again, I'm going to have another one of these cherries because it's it's a cherry night. And these things are these things are unbelievable. And if you want to try one of these guys, Old Smoky Distillery. How's that look? Can you see it? Move, that, move, move, to, your move face. It to the there you move. go. Along, it's, uh, like which way? It's, well, it's right there. It's yeah. But, okay. Anyhow, enough of them. You can send me my free bottle in the mail. <laughs> 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 Two. One for me and Scotty. Of course. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So anyhow, with that, we're gonna say um, rest in peace, Tommy Cox. This is Ethan's grandfather. Just passed away recently. And I'd like to wish everybody, uh, well, it's Christmas behind us, but I hope you all had a great, great Christmas and got all the presents that you wanted and Santa Claus was really good to you guys. And then on top of it, I want to wish everybody the best of luck in the new year. So uh, you guys aren't out fly fishing because your lakes are frozen over. Ice fishing has been pretty darn, pretty darn awesome up here in Pemberton. And if you guys are needing a Whistler vacation or a winter vacation, come up and visit us. We're up here in Pemberton which is just north of Whistler. It's only about 20, 25 minutes north. We've got a lovely sports shop here, Spud Valley Sporting Goods LTD at 1380 Birch Street. Pretty easy to find us. The only sports shop in Pemberton. That's right. Right beside AC Gas. Anyhow, I'm gonna leave it at that. 
See you next year.